today we want to discuss the Lord's Supper. I want to do two parts. The first one is to talk about the terms that are used in the New Testament. And then next week we look at the meaning. There are four terms that are used in the New Testament, or at least have been interpreted by the church as being the terms that reference what we call the Lord's Supper. The first one is Lord's Supper. And interestingly enough, the only time that term is found is in 1 Corinthians 11.20 when it says this, when you come together, is it, it is not the Lord's Supper that you eat, for as you eat, each of you goes ahead without waiting for anybody else. One remains hungry and another gets drunk. Don't you have homes to eat in and to drink in? Or do you despise the church of God and humiliate those who have nothing? But there we find the term Lord's Supper. It's the only time it's found in the New Testament. A second phrase that is used is a term communion. And if you look in 1 Corinthians 10, 16, we find these words uh, that Paul wrote. Is not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks a participation in the NIV? In the re New Revised Standard Version, it's the word sharing. And in the Old King James, it's the word communion. Is it not a communion in the blood of Christ? And is not the bread that we break a communion or a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of that one loaf. So communion is a word that is used to refer to what the experience is. The word communion comes from the Greek koinonia, which means a common mind and a common thinking. So when we take the Lord's Supper, we have a common mind and a common thinking about the Lord and remembering the instituting of that on the Passover feast and remembering his death, burial, and resurrection. A third phrase is a term breaking of bread. We find this in Acts 2.42 and Acts 20, verse 7. And some would say this is just simply eating a meal. But back then, what they would do is they would have weekly potlucks, or they would meet in people's homes, that is. And they would have a meal. And as a part of that meal, they would share in the Lord's Supper. They would share in communion. They would break bread. So often through the years, the term breaking of bread became synonymous with what we call the Lord's Supper. And then the final word is the word Eucharist a word that most of us don't use, but it's because it's a Greek word. It's just been transliterated for us. But uh, churches like the Catholic and the Lutheran Episcopalian Church use that particular term. And it's a very good term in the sense that it's a Greek word that's found in 1 Corinthians, the, sixth, the 10th chapter in the 16th verse, where it says, don't we give a thanksgiving? And so that's really what the word means is to be thankful. So as we come together and we share uh, in the Lord's Supper, we have a common mind with each other and we become one body by breaking the bread and we give thanks for what Jesus has done for us.